All right, tonight we're going to talk about some basic color correction in Final Cut Pro. I like to start with duplicating the sequence or whatever I started with, and then just making one for color correction. That way I can always go back and have a reference. Not a rule, but helps me to keep things separated in my mind. We'll talk about uh, some of the tools that Final Cut has to help us to do this. The first one we're going to talk about is the video scopes window. You can get this by going to Tools, Video Scopes, or do Window, Arrange, Color Correction. All right, Video Scopes Monitor. Uh, we'll talk about what each of these things do. The histogram, basically the same thing as what you'd see in Levels in Photoshop, if, familiar, if you're familiar with that. We won't talk about this one as much, just because it's not as helpful when we're doing video. We'll mostly use these other ones. Uh, we'll start with this one, the Waveform Monitor. This is a visual graph of our uh, of the luma I guess in your shot so blacks and whites and grays and uh, things like that it starts down with zero is black and then goes all the way up to gray and to white so kind of everything is in between same thing with the RGB parade which is same thing with color red green and blue with the darker reds lighter reds and so on and then this guy another thing is just kind of like the intensity of, of of your color itself. All right, we'll start with we'll start with this shot. This is a good one. This is a a music video that I edited a while back, so we'll just use this as a, an example. Go to video filters, color correction. For this one, we're just going to use color corrector just to start it off with. Go to filters. You can click on the visual button or go up to the tab. How this works is we have two color wheels, one that controls the balance of our image and then the other one that controls the overall hue as they are labeled. We'll talk about how to use those. These sliders down here control the whites, midtones, and blacks and then the saturation of our image independently um, from each other and we will talk about how to use those with the graph um, in order to make our image look how we want it to. Basically, what we're going to use is we're going to use these guys to make sure that our black levels and white levels are where they're supposed to be. The optimal range, you want these blacks, the black levels right here, to be down at zero. So basically, this little gap here means that the blacks in our shot aren't truly black. They're slightly above, so they're more towards the gray range. Not usually a huge deal, but it helps from shot to shot to keep these down here, and it just looks a little better. Keeps it consistent, I guess, if they're always the same. And then the same thing with the whites. There isn't a lot of, like, there's a huge gap here between what's true white and 100% white and what we're seeing here. You can go through and click on the little arrow, and you can see that when we click on that, these levels move. You can either drag the slider or click on the arrows, drag it up, it's taking away from our black value, you can see it's pushing it up. Probably never want to do that, I guess unless you're going for some kind of weird effect, I don't know. Do what you want. But this is neutral, back in the middle, like the default. So if we bring it down until the blacks are kind of resting on that line, and that you know, brings it up a little nice and good. Do the same thing with the whites. We'll punch them up so that we don't have to go all the way, but just so that there's some some contrast already uh, in our in our image. I'll take that down a little more. Same thing. The midtones just kind of take this this middle area and uh, can adjust them independently. So depending on what what you're going for, I guess. So there you go. This up here is, you probably want to do this first actually before we start messing with the blacks and stuff. But anyway, uh, you start with this. This will be your white balance. Um, so you can pick a color, pick something that's kind of white. This doesn't really change much because Camera Guy did a good job of making it pretty accurate. But you can grab this little guy, pull down Command, the Apple key or butterfly or whatever people call it to make it go faster. So hold that down, make it go fast. And this will kind of let you adjust the, I guess, really just the white balance of where you, 
where you want it to be. So I'm going to leave it pretty close to where it was. I'll just reset that just because I like how this worked out. Maybe we could warm it up a little bit. There we go. But another thing, to, good thing to do is you can toggle off the switch to kind of see the original just to see what you're doing. Helps to also look away every once in a while uh, to kind of reset your eyes. You should kind of get used to looking at it and kind of forget what you're doing. Q wheel, same thing. I don't know. Depends on what you're what you're doing. You can adjust it really subtly and get a you know interesting little effect. But it depends on what you're working on. We'll talk about the uh, some of the other color correction filters. There's another one called Color Corrector Three Way. Go over. I guess we can click the tab. Click on Visual tab takes you over there. Very similar, except you'll notice there's three wheels instead of two. What these do is they they work with the blacks, midtones, and white, same as these, but you're adjusting the color of those. Uh, so think of the same thing as just each individual one has its own color wheel, and then these are the same sliders that we played with before. So if we go over here and turn this one off, we can go through and say we just wanted to, you know, do the same thing to the black, you know, put it down there, punch up the whites again, uh, do the same thing with the midtones or whatever, uh, bring saturation up. But then what you could do is you could you could put, you know, put some blues in the shadow. Um, this is kind of becoming a, a popular effect. It's kind of it looks almost like fully developed film or stuff like that. If you're going for a more stylistic look, it's always kind of fun to do. Um, or you can just do that just to the shadows and then do the same thing to the whites. You know, take it the other direct take it a different direction. So I don't know, you can create some weird effects if you want. Kinda handy. I usually just start with, with this one just to get an overall good, you know, make sure everything's nice and nice and balanced before I start uh, really messing with it. So just food for thought. Most of the other ones, uh, where'd it go? Video filters. Another good one to be aware of, you can play with all the rest of these and see what they do. They're pretty self explanatory. Um, is Broadcast Safe Filter. You probably don't have to worry about this unless you're outputting to like something for television. It tends to, like, if the whites get too high, they sometimes, at least with older TVs, they make a, s a weird sound coming out of the speakers. I don't know if that really happens anymore with newer TVs and stuff like that, but that was a problem. But you want to make sure that nothing goes above this. So what this does, say, or we'll do an example. So let's go over to our color corrector and say we have the whites like way high. So like way blown out. Let's take it all the way. So go over to our broadcast save. What that does. See what it's doing over here. It's just stopping those from peaking, I guess. One thing that I forgot to mention was you can show excess luma. What this does will give you these funny looking zebra stripes, and that means that the white values or even color, sometimes color values, if there's way too much color, it'll give you a little exclamation point saying that, hey, there's too much color in there. So you can kind of back it off until it's uh, down to where it's supposed to be. There you go. Green. Green is good. According to colors and stoplights and go lights and stuff like that. That wasn't funny. Anyway, so if you do the same thing with the saturation, you can punch up the color, take it down. If you want to pull some color out of it, give you a nice little soft, uh, nice old film look. Alright, say you have your color correction on a shot, you have it where you like it, um, and there's, you know, no doubt multiple occurrences of it. If you wanted to copy this to you know to other shots, here's a quick way to to do that. You can either go through and do filter and then just right click on it copy or edit copy or command C on the keyboard. Or you can take this and drag it down to one and it'll apply it to it to whatever that shot was. Um, Let's let's go find one that uses the same uses the same same shot. 
Um, Apple F. What is this? Seven six eight six. All right. Find. There's one right here. That's convenient. Okay. So we take this guy. Drag it down. Luma off. Go away. You're annoying. Okay. Say you wanted to go find um, other occurrence of the same shot. Fun shortcut that's useful. Command F brings up the find tool and you can type in the name of the shot or at least part of it and you find all and it'll highlight all like occurrences of that. So then you can go through and just quick visually see, there we go, these are the same, these are all from the same shot apparently. So there you go, fun tip. Alright, let's talk about some secondary color correction that we can do uh, to a shot inside Final Cut. Go to effects, video, color correction, color corrector, go to the limit effect, it's kind of a little hidden, kind of hard to see. Click on the eyedropper and uh, pick pick a color, click this key and it'll let us see our mat. And what we can do is expand our color range a little bit, move this, widen up, keep going, down, there we go. And then what we can do is we can soften the mat. This is basically what we're going to be affecting. The white will be what is affected, and black is the stuff that gets left alone. And uh, that looks alright. Let's move these. Give us some more room to see what we're doing. Alright, click on the key. Uh, twice more to get back to where we can edit it. And what we can do is play with some of the color effects and it'll affect just what, whatever we had selected. So if you want, you can pull the color out of that, you know, a little bit. Or change it entirely. You could do this to somebody's t-shirt or really kind of whatever you want. Pretty useful. So we could leave just that. Click on this little shape here. What this does is it is inverts the mat. So click on that. What it does is it inverts what is selected. Back to our key. So if we invert it. We could select like the skin tones and color correct those individually. So if there's a little bit too much light or not enough light on their face. Another good tip, this little diagonal line here is what skin tones should be. So this shot doesn't because we pulled all the color out of it. But say we take it back to the original. If this was a close up, we could see the skin right here. It should be a color range that should go somewhere along this diagonal line. And that way, you, so when you're adjusting your white balance, you can keep the, the skin tones along that range if you wanted to. So there you go. Hope this is helpful.